Hey everyone, it's Nico, aka I Design Cars with Local Motors, and today I wanted to talk about a application that many of you may have heard of. Some of you it may be new to, but it's an application that I use a lot, uh, and a lot of you um, probably use uh, for basic sketching. And it is Autodesk Sketchbook Pro. Uh, the great thing about this program is it's actually really affordable. So uh, it's about sixty dollars uh, normal price, and then sometimes if you're lucky, you can get it for thirty dollars. Um, we've given this application away in, in terms of prizes uh, for some challenges, but it's a really, really awesome application, uh, very affordable and extremely powerful. Uh, so I wanted to talk about some of just the highlights of, of Sketchbook Pro today, and so without further ado, I'll just kind of jump in. Uh, it's laid out really to have a focus on the uh, on the, the user, and so the cool thing with uh, Sketchbook Pro is basically it's just like sketching. It's just like a sketchbook. It's like you get a blank piece of paper. And you can see in the user interface, all the tools are kind of off to the side, and they're really easy to just move around, get out of the way. Um, and you can uh, get all of them out of the way just by hitting the tab key and then having them come back. And if you come back down here, for example, you can uh, access kind of the different tools that you want. So it's really, really simple to use uh, to get the tools in and out of the way and, and have a view. You can see that I started a sketch on the Lamal car. Uh, basically, this was for the sketch wall, just a quick sketch. This is just a fast, you know, couple couple minute sketch. But uh, I just wanted to kind of show you like why this application is really cool. You've got tons of different brushes. You can create and save your own brushes and add them to the toolbar. Uh, you have features that are really cool, like layers. Uh, and then if you want to save the if you want to save the document, you can save it as a layered tif .tif .tif file or a layered Photoshop file. And then you can take it, the document and open it up in Photoshop. You have really uh, kind of basic selection tools like marquee tool and the lasso tool. You have the crop tool, zoom tool, text tool, and the move tool. You also have really interesting things that you don't find elsewhere, like a ruler tool. So if you want to do a custom uh, angle, specific angle, diagonal line, you can do that. Maybe to help you make a grid. You have a kind of, this is the only application I know other than uh, Autodesk's alias, um, that, which this came from. You have this really cool ellipse tool that you can completely customize and turn, you know, make ellipses at basically any angle of ellipse, and then you can change the angles of the ellipses. Uh, you also have a French curve tool, and you can choose between the different types of curves. And this is this can be really useful, you know. So I could, if I wanted to get that curve, you know, just right on on my lawn's car, you know, you can I can just overlay that right there. Let's see, I'm just going to come up and make a new layer really quick, and on top of that layer. I'm just going to, I'm going to make sure that the pencil selected uh, color is a, is a black color, and I'm just going to come over, and there you go. And so now, if I move that out of the way, or just get that, get rid of that curve. You can see I have this nice curve here. I can come in and I can erase and change the size of my eraser. Get right down here, and I can come in and I can just kind of erase that, you know, integrate it as I wish. Uh, then another uh, cool. A uh, tool that you, know, you can't really find anywhere else is the symmetry tool. So say I want to do, I don't know, like something that kind of looks like it's reflecting or something. So I have this really cool symmetry tool and you can uh, you can use that. So if you wanted, for example, to do like the front of a car uh, or the top view of a car, you could do that. You could use it for that. And you can also uh, you have a vertical symmetry. And as you can see, I have both symmetries turned on right now. So if I were, to, for example, to make like a circle out right here, you can see it draws a circle in all four quadrants of the photo of the image. That's really cool. Uh, you have different types of, of curve drawing tools. So the main one I have right now is just kind of the, the speed curve. So it shows different the velocity of the of the line that I'm drawing and also the pressure based on the Wacom tablet that I'm using. You have this kind of more of a vectorized one, which kind of you can see it smooths things out, keeps things a little bit more consistent. You have the line tool, so instead of using the, the ruler tool, if you want to just make a custom line, you can do that really quickly. Done. Square tool, same thing. Uh, the uh, kind of an angle tool, so if I wanted to like do like a, a box, for example, without having to kind of guesstimate things, I can just do this really quick thing and just hit enter. Now I have a, a nice like top of a box. Um, and a circle tool, and I can just kind of make an ellipse there, and it draws a ellipse really quickly. Then, uh, then you know, I have this Copic library. So it's a simulated Copic library. It's really cool. 
Um, I can come over and I can basically ch choose from the different types of grays and the different hues uh, really easily. And then I can go between the illustration and design markers. Um, as Copic is really particular on that. This is actually a free plugin for the application. Really, really useful. And the markers are just really beautiful. So if I use a, if I use Copic and let's just say I'm going to do like a light blue or something, uh, throw that on a new layer really quick, um, just to show you how they react. You know, uh, oh, get all the, on the circle tool. So I'm going to undo that. Really easy to undo. Just Command Z or Control Z on the on the uh, Windows computer. And just come back to the stroke tool, and you can see that they act just like a marker tool would. Um, and so uh, they, they're you have the nice kind of pressure with them, and uh, you can kind of overlap them as well. And you can see that just the, the different layering, just like a just like real markers um, would react. So very uh, cool tool, and then if you know I made this junk layer, I can get rid of that really easily. Or, you know, that's hiding it. I can get rid of it for good, um, and that's kind of Sketchbook Pro in a nutshell. Just some of the, the really cool features. Like I said, you have all these different types of brushes that you can you can use. Um, so I can come in here and you know use the Copic color, and I can come and do this really cool cool like splatter. Uh, so you can you know you can really get really creative and. If you want to, you know, make the brush size bigger. You know, so now I have this kind of graffiti thing. For those of you who remember Microsoft Paint, uh, and I can I can actually edit this. I can make my own brushes. That's one of the the really powerful features with uh, the new Sketchbook Pro version. A couple other things: Sketchbook Pro is available for tablets. So for Android and iOS tablets, the iPad, for example, you can download it on there. You can, if you have an Apple computer or an iCloud account. To work on Sketchbook Pro uh, on your Mac, save it to your iCloud account, work it on it on your iPad later, save it, and then come back to your Mac and work on it. That's a really cool feature. Um, and so I just wanted to kind of quickly run you just through some of the features. If, uh, if you find it for $30, I, I think it's probably the best $30 you can spend, uh, honestly. And if you uh, if you need a really quick sketching tool that just will help you get right into sketching on a daily basis on like, digital sketching, I think this is far better than Photoshop. Just the ability to uh, you know the, the way that the lines work. I've loved Sketchbook ever since I got my first copy back in uh, I think 2006 or 2007. I just fell in love with this application just because of how how easy it was for me to kind of just dive in and start sketching. And it's just, uh, it, it works so well with a Wacom tablet. Just make sure you have a, a, a tablet, um, a drawing tablet, when you get this application. Uh, so for 60 bucks, great deal. For $30, it's just kind of one of those tools that if you want to design, you should definitely have it in your tool bin. Um, let's see if there's anything else uh, on here that I want to show you. Um, not really, just a, just a great app. So go get it. I guess the one thing, if Autodesk is listening, the one thing that's a little annoying is the symmetry tool, you can't move. It just sits in the center of your document at all times. So, I mean, it's not bad if you have layers because, for example, I can make a new layer and I can do my drawing, you know, and then uh, I can turn the tool off and I can, you know, I can move uh, the, I can move the layer, actually, uh, if I want. But, you know, that's still kind of annoying. Like, if you have something over here and you want to do the symmetry right on there, it'd be so much better if you could do that as opposed to having to use the, the move and rotate tool and kind of having to put the two pieces together. But um, other than that, and I think that'll probably come out in, in uh, Sketchbook Pro 7. I mean, they have to leave features so they can keep upgrading, right? Other than that, great tool. Go get your hands on it. If you have any questions, post them in the, in the comments below. And... Um, you know, look forward to talking to you about other cool software and products and books in the future. Take care, guys. Thanks very much. Cheers.